Just got a oh, it, cranberry. I, I, I don't get, get, I, get, get the the box roll cranberry. in there somewhere. Right. Get it in there. Maybe what? Chase will take it after today. <laughs> find a way. Nobody right. wants it. Come on, Chase. find a way. What, what is, what is, what is, what, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. I, I'm, I'm not even trying. I don't know. Well, I'm look, not look, even he's trying. Got a, he's got a hook. Excuse me. He's got a win today before. Oh, okay. Oh, Sorry. You have to win to have a nickname. Okay. So it's hour number two. If you just missed hour uh, number one, please seek out uh, on NFL.com or all of our platforms a story that Jane Slater just yes. brought to you of a young boy who wears a helmet because he could uh, have a seizure at any point in time, and it protects him just in case he has the type that lands him on the ground. And um, it's just an incredible organization that he and his brother have started called Helmet Number 4 Helmet. And... Um, you know, hel helmets for helmets. And uh, as we throw out to Jane Slater right now, she's going to give a report from Dallas. Uh, just on behalf of all of us here right. at the NFL Network and the NFL Media Group, the fact that we had that story on our air and it was brought home to all of you, it all started because Jane was interacting with a fan yeah. uh, on, yeah. on the job. Yeah. Unscripted. And, and yep. just that, that, sort, that, that <clears throat> small gesture of just saying hello to a little yeah. kid. Um, yeah. It has led to all of that. So let's throw out to Jane right now and job, just Jane. say uh, great stuff, Jane. Great job and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Rich. And shout out to the Saints and Thomas Moore said for taking time to make his day, which was really what started a lot of this and that story. So thanks for the love. Let's talk a little bit about this Cowboys Redskins matchup. You know, when the Cowboys fired their offensive line coach, Paul Alexander, and promoted their former offensive lineman, Mark Colombo, didn't exactly make headlines. What's making headlines in the last two weeks is the fact that the Cowboys are finding ways to win. Ask quarterback Des Prescott and ask running back Ezekiel Elliott, and they'll tell you it has a lot to do with that offensive line. They're doing a better job protecting up front, helping him get in the groove and find those holes. And because he's getting to the secondary, Ezekiel Elliott is getting dangerous. But when you look at the Redskins, don't count them out. They've got a stout run defense. And the last time they met up a month ago, well, they held Ezekiel Elliott to 42 scrimmage yards on 17 touches. Those guys are challenging. They are difficult. And when this is a game that will divide, that will decide the division leader, you know both are going to be playing for all the marbles. Now back to you, Rich. Okay, thanks again, Jane. Um, so you see what the Dallas Cowboys have done since acquiring Amari Cooper for a first-round draft choice. There's uh, much social media ridicule to cough up a first round draft choice for a guy that had not done very much at all with the Raiders over the last year and a half. But since his arrival, the offense has been much more Zeke friendly. And I know that the whole concept of being Dak friendly is what led to so many of the changes this offseason, including the departure of Des Bryant, supposedly. So I turn to uh, you, Michael Irvin. Let's start with you, if you don't mind. And ask you the biggest reason for the Cowboys' turnaround. Is it Amari Cooper? In th this league is, is, is interesting in this sense. You know, no matter how great you play this league, you have to show this league that you can do it. And they'll start giving you that respect. Amari Cooper, even though, Rich, you talked about it, he looked, he, he looked a little different differently in, in, in Oakland. <clears throat> now he is the man in Dallas. And it's a whole different thing. I remember Jerry Jones going on, talking about Des Bryant and saying he hasn't been a number one receiver in quite a while. And he was talking to the 13, 1400 yards. They were watching number one guys, Antonio Brown and, 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 and Julio Jones put up. But the other side of it is how defenses prepare for you. And just the threat of that passing game makes defense have to prepare for it. And that gives Zeke room to run. <clears throat> Zeke running the ball and getting opportunities that is a Dak friendly offense. That's how important this kid is, and I'm glad they went and got him after they heard me talk about it on oh, Thursday Night Football. Okay. Thanks. Good, good job, Michael. Way to, way to, way to get him that guy. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. I appreciate it. You know, when I was in school, I used to love math. And why? Because it wasn't subjective, right? It, it was if you want to find an answer, <laughs> here's the formula. Put the, put, the, put the numbers in, and you get the answer. And why I believe Dallas has had a turnaround is because. They've applied the formula that has made them a good team. You can go back a couple years when they were 13-3. and three, The formula was run the football first, run the football second, let the pass game be a complimentary piece. Now they've got a better defense than they even had then. But play to the formula. That's exactly what they've done the last couple weeks is they haven't tried to prove to anybody, hey, we can throw it. 
that can be that guy. Oh, we got a mark. They have run the football first, and it has opened everything else up, but they've dominated the line of scrimmage, and they've dominated on defense. That, to me, is the formula for the Dallas Cowboys. Keep that formula, and you're going to win more games the rest of the way. There are two things. There's perception and there's reality, okay? But both of these things added up to where the Cowboys are. The perception was they gave away a number one pick to help Dak in right, friendly, right, right. right? To throw the ball more often and down the field, and, and we're going to do this because we gave up a one, we're going to do this. Well, the reality is they're using 11 personnel a lot more than they used to, okay? 11 personnel, three wide receivers, one back, one tight end. You know, they use it about 70% of the time now. And what happens when you use 11 personnel, the Rams use it 97% of the time. But anyway, the Dallas Cowboys, they don't have a fullback playing like they used to with Emmett. They spread you out. And now Zeke is not running against a loaded up box. He's running against nickel and dime defenses. That's where he's getting more yards. He's got a light box to run against because 11 personnel will invite that kind of a front. Right. And so they, they, the, that's the reality of this whole thing. He only had 33 yards against the Redskins first coach. game. You know what? 30. He's going to have 33 in the first quarter of this game because they're going to spread you out and slam him in there. Yeah, in the Monday night game, Amari Cooper's first game with the Cowboys, Zeke had only six touches after halftime, and that was a close game. It's not like they had to wing it all over the lot, and then they went back to, I guess, the formula. My question for you is, are we going to see a team, could it be Washington, saying we're going to stop Zeke, we're going to put eight in the box, and, and, and let's see if 19 it. can it. actually beat us right I, now. I, I nobody's, had, nobody's forced the Cowboys I, I, to do that I would that love yet. to see that. And, Coach, you, you alluded to it earlier. I would love to see if Josh Norman travels with Amari Cooper. Mark Cooper is a big dude, a big kid that has great transition ability in and out of cuts. He does, he's, a, he's great at it, and I believe he gives that pocket, that, 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 that room for Dak Prescott. I would love to see them press him and watch him come up big today. And the Dallas Cowboys are on national television one week from today as well. The league's been doing this the last few years. It's taking two teams from Thanksgiving.